Chapter 5, Shear and Bone The shear loot is referring to a force that tends to produce a sliding failure on the material along the plane or that is parallel to the directions of the force. As for the bone, it is referring to a mechanism of the force that can transfer from the concrete to the steel bar. The arrow here represents the bone stress which is covering within the contact regions between the steel bar and the concrete. First, we deal with the shear load. In order to understand the shear loads, first we need to understand the response of the beam. This figure shows a typical response of a reinforced concrete beam. Before the beam is loaded, no stress develops within the member and the beam is not undergoing any deformations. However, as a UDL load is applied to the member, the beam start to bend downward. This leads to tensile stress at the bottom of the beam and compressive stress on top of the beam. The compressive stress and the tensile stress distributions can be represented by these figures. High tensile stress develop at the mid span of the beam at the bottom of the beam while high compressive stress develop at the mid span on top of the beam. The magnitude of stress reduce further away from the high stress regions for the tension and the magnitude of the compressive stress also reduce as it is further away from the high stress region. The curve profile here indicates the regions of the stress of similar levels of stress. As you see from the distribution here, you will know that this region will undergo a lower degree of the tensile stress while this region undergo a higher degree of tensile stress. Under vertical load, Flexural crack normally occur at the mid-span of the member. This is mainly due to the high level of tensile stress. As the applied load increase, more flexural crack develop along the way towards the support. From the stress profile here, you know that this region should undergo a similar level of tensile stress and this region will give you a lower level of stress. Therefore, the development of the crack here is most likely will go along the regions of a similar tensile stress level. It is not likely to penetrate into the region which is having a lower stress level. This forms a diagonal shear crack here. And this crack is actually triggered by high level of shear load acting near to the support. From the shear force and bending moment diagram, we will know that at the support, higher shear load is applied while at the mid-span, a lower degree of shear load is applied. With the existence of the diagonal crack, the member resistance to the load can be affected. Therefore, shear reinforcement is required. These are the typical shear reinforcement that can be applied to a reinforced concrete beam. It can be in the form of stirrup, or in the form of incline bar. This cross section shows the typical arrangement of the stirrup. And when the incline bar is provided, adequate anchorage length of the incline bar is to be provided. This is to ensure that the stress can be effectively distributed from the incline bar to the concrete. 
Based on the arrangement of the shear reinforcement, the incline bar seems to be more effective. As the arrangement of the reinforcement bar is about just 90 degree perpendicular to the directions of the diagonal crack. However, in the construction industry, the stirrup is more commonly used due to simplicity of applications and the stirrup can be used to hang the top reinforcement bar in the beam, especially before casting of the concrete.